Okay, well, uh, my previous video, I uh, showed how to uh, remove an ECM or engine control module on this car behind me, which is my uh, 2010 Lincoln MKS. So today, I'm going to uh, kind of show you how to install a BCM or body control module. This guy right here, right here. And as you can see, it's got kind of the uh, fuse box uh as part of it as well it's kind of that's why it's kind of a bigger unit so the the biggest problem is a uh, room um it's up under the dash kind of by your left foot and the left wall of the dash area so here's the dilemma i'm having on this car again it's a uh, 2010 lincoln mks it's a 3.7 liter base model all-wheel drive so i put a professional scanner on this guy and it said that basically I'm having communication issues, et cetera, et cetera, and codes uh, regarding the body control module, the BCM, it's giving me codes saying the module is bad, whatever. Um, I can't buy a new one from Ford, a new BCM body control module, because they said, oh, that part number doesn't exist. We don't make it anymore. However, however, if, if you buy uh, that along with the wiring harness for the engine and the transmission, whatever, then we can sell you one. You got to buy both together as a package for the tune of 1100 bucks. So I'm not doing that. So I figured, well, rather than spend the big bucks at the dealer, I'll go get a used one at a junkyard. So I did, 30 bucks. And then in my infinite wisdom, I gave them back the original from the car to get my $10 core charge back. Well, what I'm finding out now is um, when I call people to say hey can you reprogram the thing or even to send it out for repair they say can't do it unless it's the original and what I'm finding out is Ford has got such a lock on the reprogramming software uh, they really make it so it's impossible to reprogram a used one unless I go to a dealer so I did call the dealer the Lincoln dealer not far from here he said yes as long as the unit's not defective we can reprogram it and actually they're very modest fee 230 bucks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. so there's eight different connectors that go on this <clears throat> and the way you slide it on and off see this tab right here move the tab up and then this slides off you can see the slide points here here in here so you will have to take this kick plate off to get enough room to get access to it um, there's a couple screws down here and there's one here and one over here one over here so to get at this screw and these you got to take the little brown trim off I'll show you the trim in a second take the brown trim off it just pries up really easy this one, the brown trim goes all the way over. Just gently pry it off, comes right off. That connector right there, we see the little red, that's the most troublesome connector to get off, at least it was for me. Reason being is because you have to kinda, this is a lock on that connector, you kinda squeeze it and it goes up. Uh, and then it uncovers a couple tabs that you have to grab well, the problem is, in order to grab it, I'm at such a bad angle being in there. And it's on the back side. I couldn't really get the power with my fingers. So the way around it is to get those tabs. I used a pair of uh, heater hose uh, removal, heater hose pliers. The reason being, you see the points on the end? They can grab those tabs and push it in. Then that connector comes right off. It's hard to see, but I have it I have it snapped in to the bracket. Now the fun begins putting these things back. Again, just don't have a lot of room, do we? Nope. That connector right there, that's the one that's on the very back of the unit. Uh, put that on before you attach the whole unit to the frame because there won't be enough room once it slid and clicks into the frame. I learned that the hard way, so I clicked it onto the frame then I had to take it off to get this darn thing on. 
This is where that little red connector goes on to the little lock connector. Uh, this is the connector where I had to use the uh, heater hose pliers to grab those tabs. So one of the things I have to decide is would it be easier to connect the connectors to the BCM and then slide it into the whole thing into the frame or slide the unit into the frame and then put the connectors in what would be easier I'm going to go for option a the first option I got other wires in like I said there's not much room so it's hard to get a good view but there's seven total including the one in the back connectors they had to put in and actually it went pretty straightforward because each connector only fits in one slot that's the beauty I have not slid the entire unit back onto the frame yet.